morning. I'm clipping this in here so that you can see us try the new keto shake from Keto uh, Keto Logi. Keto Logi. Uh, excuse my lack of makeup and lack of hair brushing. We just woke up and it's 9:19, so slackers. We're gonna try this guy out today. Jeff is um, getting some water. You need 10 to 12 ounces, and it's uh, you use two scoops of this chocolate powder, so I'll show you right quick. So here is the keto shake that we're gonna try. Please excuse what you're hearing in the background. Ivy is watching Steve and Maggie. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna need scissors. Watch your fingers, it's about to get serious. All right. So, ooh, it smells really good. It kind of smells like, uh, it smells like Nesquik. Like the powdered Nesquik. I'm serious. Smell that. It does. It smells like powdered Nesquik, like just like it, so, yeah. I've had protein shakes before. I've had like Advocare ones and um, other like kind that you can buy at the store. I don't remember which kind they were, but from Walmart, I've had the Equate version. I've had the soy isolate. I'm allergic to whey protein. I didn't look to see if that was in here. No. So there's no whey protein in this, so I'm allowed to have this. All right, how much water did you give me? 11 ounces. All right, so 10 to 12 ounces, so we're going with 11. All right, here we go. One scoop. And Ivy is on the counter playing with scissors. It says that you can use um, almond milk or other things like that in this, but we just used water. So I'm going to stir this up using this little... Um, coffee frother because it does really well at stirring things and turning them nice and thick. All right, I'm gonna try it. I'm probably gonna prefer it with almond milk just because I'd just rather have it that way. I don't know, it'd be thicker. It's very good. It, it reminds me of, oh, there's an aftertaste. It reminds me of Nesquik. It's maybe not as sweet as Nesquik, but that's what it really reminds me of. And it's got an aftertaste, that like artificial sweetener aftertaste. So, I like that a lot. Change $44 and some change for this entire container. There are 18 servings in this container, so that wound up being around 2 or $3 for me and Jeff per serving. Um, there's the macros on it right there. Screenshot that, look at it, so you can see what it is. I'm gonna let Jeff try it now and I'm gonna read you what's in it. So, let's talk about what's in this. Organic erythritol, good. Dutch cocoa, vanilla flavoring, um, sea salt, xanthan gum, solu soluble corn, corn fiber, which I wasn't really pleased with that ingredient, but it's really low down on the list, so. Stevia, sodium, cassinate, and sunflower lecheson. Let to, can't say that word. Let to shin, help me. Um, coconut milk and milk derived ingredients, it says. So, yeah, it doesn't have whey protein, which I told you I'm allergic to that. So I'm really glad because I didn't think to look for that when I grabbed this. I don't know why I wouldn't have thought to look for it, but I didn't. On the front, it says two net or less than 2% net carbs, which, wow, that's really low. Um, it's got 14 grams of carbohydrates total, 7 grams of fiber, so that leaves us with 7 so far, uh, with 7 grams of erythritol, which also means you could take that out because it's an artificial sweetener that doesn't raise your blood sugar. So that's going to leave us with zero carbs, zero net carbs, which is insane to me. And a 300 calorie meal um, with a fat count of 25 grams, which is great. That's a lot of fat. So if you're looking for something that you need to get your fat in and you just seem, you're not seeming to be able to do that really easily in your day, this could be really super great because it's going to be zero carbs or net carbs. Um, unless you're one of those people who count half of your sugar alcohols, then this may wind up being like seven for you, but uh, I don't. I count, I take them all out, especially when it's erythritol because I know it doesn't have any effect on my blood sugar. But yeah, this could be really excellent for somebody that um, wants to make sure they're getting their fat in and is having trouble doing that. What do you think? How did you, how did you like it? It's not bad. It's not bad. Do you think it tastes somewhat like chocolate milk or Nesquik with a weird well, aftertaste? Freeze it and eat it. Freeze it and eat it. Hmm. I think so. I know people make like chocolate muffins with chocolate protein powder. We should try that. Like maybe doing something of that that sort. But you do like it. Yes. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Cool. Okay, guys. It's later in the day. 
and I tried that shake for you this morning. But now we have done something. We went to Home Depot and we bought cabinet paint. This is the cabinet paint that we got, the Rust-Oleum cabinet paint, where you're supposed to be able to take cabinets that are stained and paint them white or a variation of white, depending on if you chose a different color and if you use the decorative glaze. We are gonna do just the base color. We don't want the decorative glaze over top of it. This is the current color of our cabinets, and as you can see, our kitchen is very cluttered with things because we are collectors of many things. We love many things, and the top of the fridge is just an embarrassment. Please don't pay that any attention. But we collect all kind of tchotchkes and like this is my nightmare before christmas area and like we just we we collect too much anyway this year the year of 2019 for me specifically has been a year where i feel like i need to clean things away from my house and get uh, just live with less very like simplistic and i'm not going crazy simple because i do love to have my things and i like to have my pretties and if something makes me happy then it's gonna sit on a shelf and i'm gonna look at it i don't care if it makes me you know if it takes up space or collects dusts but i will say that there comes a time in your life where you feel overcrowded and like you have too much and it's making you stressed out or whatever and that's what this kitchen does for me so here's the before as you can see, we have some major problems with the stain and trim around the tops of the cabinets. Well, there is no trim. Um, there's lots of scratches on the cabinets and just, they look terrible. I mean, this was done a few years back. Look at those scratches. Oh, it's so bad. But yeah, this was never painted. I don't know what happened there. Yeah, so we need to fix it. We're gonna show you the after when we're done, but we're gonna go through this step by step. Come along. Here's the kitchen before, cabinets before, cabinets before, lower cabinets, lower cabinets. They're all scratched up, the poor things. And please excuse my dirty kitchen because it's nasty and my laundry room. But this is it. About to start pulling everything down and cleaning all the dust from up there so that we can start this painting process. So we bought a piece to cover this because when they redid the kitchen or when we redid the kitchen, we just painted this and we took down, it had sort of like a gingerbread like this. It had paneling that went from here to the ceiling and when we knocked the paneling out, we saw that there was sheetrock behind it so we just went ahead and knocked it out and made a, count, a top space so that you could like put things up here like this. So. We've got this, and this is what we're working with now, which is where the paneling was attached. So we've gone ahead and bought this piece from Home Depot. It's a trim piece. Um, I'm not real sure what it was meant for, but we are going to attach this up here so that it looks nice um, and, and it <laughs> matches and has like a, an actual trim versus having just wood pieces. We are officially... <laughs> I think we're ready to prime. We don't need to worry about taping all this off because this is all going to be replaced as well. We're just taping off like the, the hood and the sides. And we're going to replace these door panels or door frames because that's ridiculous. And yeah, I think we're ready. So, and it doesn't matter if we frame off the window either because it's white. So, here we go. This is what we're going to use for the back. Um, this is actually laminate flooring. And it's like the peel and stick, and we thought it would look nice as a backsplash. So we're gonna try it. We're gonna try it. I mean, who knows? If it looks bad, we didn't spend that much money on it, and we can always return. Did we? We bought too many. Too much. Well, um, we, well, oh, we bought oh. too many. Well, we're gonna use the rest for the floor and the bathroom. But we're gonna use the rest in the bathroom, yeah. So the best of the bathroom has to have a new floor. So yep. So the next step is to clean these cabinets off really well and get all the dust and grime and grease off. Jeff's already cleaned this cabinet um, from all of the grease from the stove, but these cabinets here are dirty from just years of dust up top, which is embarrassing, but real life. I'm gonna go ahead and dust all the nasty shot glass spots off of there, and we're gonna get ready to prime it. Okay, so step two is in process. Oh, the music, copyright. Okay, so step two is in process currently. We have killsed Savannah. I don't want to get copyrighted. We've killsed all the st 
stuff the cabinets and stuff and it's like not perfect obviously but that's just because it's just kills we were told that and you don't typically need that this or you don't need kills for this kit normally but we were told by the guy at home depot that if we didn't do it because we had stained the cabinets ourselves and we had put this coating or something on it that we may have trouble with the rust-oleum kit chipping or peeling or something it wasn't gonna stick right so he said that we should kills it which that was a $16.99 fix um, we haven't even used a fourth of the kills can on the top parts and we haven't started on the bottoms yet so we're gonna do the bottoms as well um, and yeah so but right now we're killsing away we have to start on the um, doors because the doors are off and outside we're gonna do those outside tomorrow um, it's supposed to storm though so I don't know we'll see so we'll see you guys tomorrow day two everybody day two so last night I don't remember how much I showed you but I did the fronts of these and I did all of that with the kills and now I've taken off the fronts of these and I've taken off the drawers or taken out the drawers from the other sides and I'm about to start taking out the drawers on the tops on this side problem is is I'm having to clean out the drawers as I'm taking them off so that's kind of a pain in the rear but this is what we did last night. Let's turn this light off. This is what we did last night. You see this um, backsplash type guy. This is actually flooring um, that we bought, like the peel and stick laminate. We bought armor. So we bought this flooring intentionally to go into the bathroom in our bedroom. And the space is so small that we went ahead and bought the whole box and decided that because we were going to have leftovers, we tried sticking it up here and like thought it actually looked pretty nice. So we're going to wind up doing the entire kitchen with that. Over here, this looks pretty darn seamless. It took a lot of effort to match up the pieces of like, I don't know what this is. Maybe it's supposed to be like brick to like make it look seamless because you have to match the pieces and cut the pieces so that they fit together and it actually looks like pieces instead of just a bunch of tiles stuck on the wall that don't match at all and that took a lot of effort but it's definitely in my opinion worth it because it looks just really good and it's very easy to clean it will be very simple to like just wipe off if grease or anything splashes up there so there's you a little tip that you can try is getting this like laminate flooring the peel and stick very simple to apply and if you have a steady hand and a really good pair of scissors or an X-Acto knife, it won't be that big of a deal. So we're gonna go ahead and kill the rest of all of this today. And then we're gonna start painting on the tops once the kills on the bottom has dried. So stay tuned. Step number 550,704. We're painting the actual doors and we have just finished painting the cabinets, the frames and all of this. Remember, that little piece up top doesn't matter. It's getting covered. But, I mean, it's coming along pretty well. So far, so good. I'm really shocked at the coverage. This is coat one, so we still have another coat to go. Here's a good example of what it looks like with terrible lighting and lots of shade. It's going pretty well. It's going pretty well, um, as you can see. We have not finished any more of the backdrop or backsplash or whatever you want to call that because we've been so busy with this part of it all. But we're still painting away at these doors and drawers and things like that. This is only the first coat. We kills them once, one on either side of them. That took a lot of time. So we are going to paint these doors on one side, let them sit for two to three hours, flip them over, and reapply a paint of co or a coat of paint. And then once they dry two to three hours, flip them over, we paint the fronts, and then we do the protective coat. And by the time we finish the protective coat, it will time for them to go on the actual um, cabinets. And that would be awesome. However, it looks like that's gonna be about two days from now. So, because the protective coat that you put on, you actually put the cabinets up, you screw them on, you leave them open, and they cannot be used for 24 hours. You cannot touch them or get them wet or anything so um, it's gonna be a long process we're hanging in there so yep just want to give you an update day three day three 
We have gone through these doors again. We painted the insides of the doors one time instead of doing a two time like they recommend. But then we flipped them over and we've started on the outside of the doors, which is obviously more important in my opinion. You can do the inside of the doors and I think we'd have enough paint because we've still got a lot left. But I just decided that for myself and to save a little bit of time and a little bit of paint, I would do the outside two coats, the inside one coat. So those are drying right over here. I'm still wearing the same shirt I wore yesterday, but I promise this is the next day. Um, I've just destroyed this shirt, so I'm, I'm putting it back on. Um, this has been done three times. All of that's been done three times. All of that's been done three times. So, I mean, it's really doing well. Um, I think that as for now, we are going to finish up the last couple doors that I have here on the floor, and we are gonna go ahead and clear coat. So we're almost there. We've got about probably two more days before this is finished. So day three, two more days to go. Holy cow, I did not think this was gonna take this long. I don't know why. I had it in my mind that this would be like a one day job. That was dumb. This is absolutely a week long process. So if you plan on doing this, just, just prepare yourself that this is gonna take a long time, a lot of determination, a lot of newspaper, and if you have little kids like us, a lot of patience, which I've run out of at this point. So, Oh my gosh, day four. And I totally forgot to record, wait, is this day five? Oh, okay, day four. I totally forgot to record what I was doing yesterday. So we clear coated the tops of the doors and drawers. I left the bottom half of them um, just regular paint. I didn't actually do a second coat and I didn't actually do the stain or the sealant on them because you see how it's like shiny on this side. I wanted just the fronts to be that way because I was trying to save paint and that is loud. I was trying to save paint and um, yeah, so I, I went ahead and just sealed the fronts. Those have dried. It is officially time to start putting the hardware back on, which I'm doing right now. Um, I'm having to go back and screw in every single one, and I realized in this process that if I would have labeled each handle to each door, it would have made this experience a lot simpler because these are not fitting up exactly the same on each one. So there's a little tip for you. Label the drawers, label the doors, and label your hardware. I saw a lady taking them and putting them in solo cups and labeling door number one, putting all of her hardware in that one thing, and that seemed to be a really good idea. I didn't think to do that. However, here's what we're doing now is just putting the um, doors, like handles and drawer handles back on, and I'll show you where we're at with everything in just a minute. We did do the trim, and I'll show you that. Um, and we did the backsplash. And I'll show you all of that. So, It is the end of day four. And we have officially finished the cabinets. They are up on every side. The drawers are back in. The doors are back on. Don't judge my kitchen because... Come on. I've done literally nothing. We've done literally nothing for the past four days other than this. So, it's Ivy. been... She did that. And Ivy is apparently tearing up money. Uh, we have done nothing but this for the past four days. So here we are, we are finished with this masterpiece. It looks great. We put the trim up like we talked about. We did everything we said we were gonna except for the sink. We put up the backsplash which looks pretty pretty good. Um, there's a couple of places that have imperfections, like right here, that we have to figure out what to do about. Oh dear. No, please don't play with screwdrivers around the freshly painted cabinetry. And then we're gonna be done, and I can actually clean my kitchen and decorate it and make it look like I want it. It's gonna be great. So, stick around for that. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay, here we are. It's been, how many days did this take us? Four days. Today's day five. Okay, guys, here we are. It's day five. So the kitchen is done. It took us a total of four days. That is working around the clock, never resting, it feels like. I mean, obviously, we slept, but we worked sun up, sun down on the kitchen. Um, the only time we ever stopped was when things would dry or, you know, things like that. But it's officially finished. So I want to show you. There it is. It's done.
It is officially done. I'm gonna turn this camera around so you can see. All right, so here are the cabinets. Don't mind the dishes, please. They're still being done after having to catch up. After all of the craziness of painting them. Look at that. We have the light fixture that we still have to switch out. And we still have the sink that we need to, the faucet that's going to be redone. But just tell me that that doesn't look so much better. Here's the other side. Other side. Look at that, it looks so nice. So we got the backsplash finished, as you can see. There's some spots that you can definitely see some mis you know, imperfections. We're gonna put some trim here. Um, and you can see the seam there. But for the most part, it looks really good. I mean, it looks really good back there. This is the other side. As you can see, it's over there behind the microwave. And then underneath here, behind this part of the cabinet. And it looks really nice back there. So I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I'm really happy with all of it. It just looks so good and it looks so wide. Let me see if I can show you from this angle. Like the kitchen looks so much wider. I love it. So there it is. It's all finished. It's finally complete. Thank you so much for joining us on this crazy ride of kitchen remodeling on a budget. And how much do you think this cost us in total? Uh, we haven't put in yet. The sink faucet that we haven't put in yet. About $250. That's a heck of a deal in my opinion. I don't know guys, I think this has been wonderful. I am so thrilled with my new kitchen. I am so excited to just use it and just feel new and clean and fresh. But thank you everybody for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful day. No, have a magical day and remodel well. I guess. <laughs>